Lord, you've been giving us revelation this morning already about the river of life that you are releasing, the geysers, dear Lord, that you want to cause to spring up, the wells that you want to spring up, dear Lord, in our midst this morning. We bless you and praise you, Lord, for this day, this Passover weekend. We are excited, dear Lord, about stepping through the sea into the new place that you have for us, the destiny that you have for your ecclesia and for your people in this hour. So, Lord, we bless you and we praise you today. We welcome you with all the fullness of your love, the fullness of your grace, the fullness of your gifts. Would you uh, release, dear Lord, revelation? Would you release to us what we need to hear today to go into this new season? Dear Lord, we thank you and bless you. We thank you, dear Lord, for Joan and Ted who celebrate 62 years together. Just as a testimony, dear Lord, of faithfulness. The testimony of faithfulness, dear Lord, that you are releasing into your church in this hour. So we bless you. We praise you. We exalt your holy name. In Jesus' name, amen. There is a river where goodness flows. There is a fountain that drowns sorrows. There is an ocean deeper than fear. The tide is rising, rising. There is a current deep inside. It's overflowing from the heart of God, the flood of heaven, crashing over us, the tide is rising, rising, yeah, bursting, bursting up from the ground, we feel it now, bursting, bursting up from the ground, we feel it now, we come alive in the we come alive in the river. We come alive in the river. We come alive in the river. There is a river where goodness flows. There is a fountain that drowns sorrows. There is an ocean deeper than fear. The tide is rising, rising. There is a current stirring deep inside. It's overflowing from the heart of God, the flood of heaven. Crashing over us, the tide is rising, rising, yeah. Bursting, bursting up from the ground. We feel it now.
How many of you have physically swum in swam swimmed? Whatever that is. How many of you have physically gotten into a river <laughs> to swim? Amen. You know, sometimes we don't want to do that. Put us in a canoe, put us in a kayak, put our feet in the side and, and put our feet down into the water and let it rush over us. But for those of you that raised your hand, and I'm a part of that too, there, it takes a certain willingness and even courage to get into the river because a lot of people think, well, I just don't know what, where it's going to go, what's going to happen, and that's exactly it. It is not normal for us. It is not what we think it's going to be because a river is constantly changing. It is constantly moving. It is constantly alive. And so, Lord, would you just remove any inhibition on us, any fear that might be in us about your river and say, Lord, we are not willing to sit on the bank. We are not willing just to put our toes in the water. We are willing, dear Lord, today to walk into the middle of the river. And even if we lose our footing, even if it causes us to move with the river, we are saying, yes, Lord, move us with the river this morning. We come alive in the river. 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 Bursting, bursting up from the ground. We feel it now. Bursting, bursting up from the ground. We feel it now. We come alive in the river. 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 Break open prison doors. Set all the captives free. Spring up a well. Spring up a well. Spring up a well in me. Nothing can stop this joy. We come alive in the river. We come alive in the river. We come alive. Spring up a well. Spring up a well. Spring up a well in me. Spring up a well. Spring up a well. Spring up a well. We come alive in the river. We come alive in the river. We come alive in the river. We come Speak to those prison doors that you have sensed over you or over your family. Speak to them. 
Break open prison doors. Break open prison doors. Break open prison doors. Yes. Shackles are falling. Chains are breaking. We come alive. 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 Oh, we're walking on hallowed ground. We come alive. We come alive. We come alive. As we eat from the tree. We come alive, 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 we come alive. Passover night has happened. The blood on the portals has protected us from the angel of death has protected us from the onslaught of a pandemic. The blood on the doors covers all. And now there's the gathering of all of our possessions. Now is the gathering of all that we need because it's time to head to the Red Sea. It's time to head out. It's time to head out, says the Lord. Gather your belongings. My blood has set you free. in our souls let them come alive 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 let the curses fall off lord let the sickness come away come away let the curses release says lord as we apply your blood apply your blood dead places come alive come alive come alive Come alive, come alive. We are hungry for you. Come alive. Hungry I come to you for I know you satisfy. I am empty, but I know your love does not run dry. So we wait for you, so we wait for you. I'm falling on my knees, offering all of me. Jesus, you're all this heart is living for. So I wait for you, 
So I wait for you. I'm falling on my knees, offering all of me. Jesus, you're all the sight is living for. I'm falling. Jesus, your other side is living for. All I'm living for. You're all I'm living for. I just want to share a picture I was seeing in my spirit as we're singing this. I saw us uh, standing in the river looking downriver as the water was flowing by us. So excited to be a part of it. But then someone came up beside us and put an arm around us and I knew immediately it was the Lord. The Lord does not ask us to come into a river so that we might experience what the river is. He invites us into the river so we would experience who He is. So Lord, would you come up now beside us, around us, and just embrace us in the river. Even take our hands, Lord, and walk together with you, maybe even swim together with you as we flow with the river. For we're talking about something that is life-giving, full of life. Take us, Lord. We offer ourselves to you. Take us, Lord. There 
has no fear when I'm with you. I am free, I am free, I am free. I am free, I am free, I am free. To be all you want me to be, I am free. I am free, I am free, I am free. I'm safe with you. I'm safe with you. more, there's so much more you want to do. Oh, we give you permission. Oh, to dine with you is our pleasure. song to him who sits on heaven's mercy seat. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. With all creation I sing praise to
song to him who sits on heaven's mercy seat. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. With all creation I sing praise to the King of kings. You are my everything. And I will adore you. The Lord is removing those shackles. I, I'm sensing right now that there is someone here or someone listening online that has got a stiffness, I believe, in their left shoulder. And I think there's even someone within the right shoulder. It was, it almost is an inability to lift up your hands as long as high as you want. And the Lord is saying, "I'm removing that. I am removing that stiffness. I am healing it." I was sensing also just some indigestion issues. That there's just some things that have been kind of off kilter with your digestive system. Just receive the breaking off of any shackle, anything that is there that is keeping you from fully receiving what the Lord wants. Something also with the feet. I was even sensing this. The Lord was reminding me of last night. I had, had some really interesting pains in my the bottom of my feet, and they had vanished. But the Lord said, I, I was telling you that there are people here that are having trouble with their feet. And the Lord is saying, I'm releasing my healing. So just receive it. Receive it. It might be for someone that's in your household, a family member or someone again online. And if that has happened to you this morning, just feel free to give testimony. But I just, I know that the Lord, I see, I've seen chains being broken. I've seen shackles falling off of wrists and off of ankles. There are people that you have been praying for and just say, Lord, I just don't see any hope because they're so shackled up. But the Lord says, I am the Lord who takes the shackles away. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy is the Lord. the 
hill you surrendered your will for they know not what they do grief in your heart your hands bear the scars of a love that led you to the tomb calvary your heaven met me I see the King of glory coming on the clouds with fire. The whole earth shakes, the whole earth shakes. I see his love and mercy washing over all our sin. The people sing, the people sing.
I see a generation rising up to take their place with selfless faith, with selfless faith. I see a new revival stirring as we pray and seek. We're on our knees, we're on our knees. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. Lord, we are here to fulfill your cause. We willingly get into the river. We willingly go where you are leading us to go. And we are in full expectation of an awakening, an arrival of you, you dear Lord, in your fullness. You are bringing forth your kingdom. You are releasing your will on earth. You are exposing the plots and plans of the enemy daily and bringing your kingdom to bear on it. Just as you have healed each of us, redeemed each of us, forgiven each of us, applied your blood to each of us, you are doing it now all over the world, Lord. Spring up, O oh well. Let the river rise. Jesus. Let's just sing that again, Vashti. Hosanna, Hosanna. We're not going to let rocks out scream us. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, 
Baruch haba b'shem Adonai. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Hosanna to you in the highest, Lord. Hosanna to you. Hosanna. Just shout Hosanna. Shout it. Hosanna! Hosanna! Jesus. Mm. Let's just prepare our time of coming to the altar this morning. There's such strength and anointing here around the front. It just it's all over the house though. It just just let's enter in, continue to enter in. Prepare your tithes and offerings. Thank you, Jesus. Let us come to the altar. Sweep over us, Lord. Sweep over us like we would physically feel the waters running over us in a river. We love you, Jesus. This is a weird revelation, but the Lord just told me this. He said, some of you are in inner tubes. Get out of the inner tube. I'm sorry. That's what he spoke to me. Get out of your inner tube. This is not floating time. This is in the river time. Amen. Come on. Come on. Bail out. (laughs) Whoa. Man. Let me leave. Gosh, it is so heavy here. Come on, y'all. Just bail out. Come on, just get in it. Father, we thank you. We bless you. You have sealed this all with your body and blood. It is a completed act. It is a completed work. It is finished. Passover has indeed taken place and continues to take place as we remember your body, your blood that was poured out and broken for us. We are alive in you, and you are alive in us. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So, Lord, again today, as we eat of this bread and drink of this cup, would you just cause the swell of your river to hit us? and release what needs to be released into each one of us as you only know but let it be released let us feel the fullness of your love this morning 
the fullness of your love, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Spring up a well. The body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, His holy, precious blood, strengthen and preserve you in the one true faith unto life everlasting. Live in His peace. Amen. 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 Wow. Would you thank Vashti for leading us this morning? Wow. Thank you, Vashti. Amen. Wow. <sighs> okay. Got some announcements. I got a couple that are not up on the screen that I need to make sure I get to you. You should have received because Kelly is an excellent gatekeeper of the house. But if you did not by chance get a new exalter for April and the uh, Bible reading guide, make sure you pick that up before you go home because we will enter fully into April. Can you believe we're going into April? Oh, my goodness. Now, we will enter into April, and I believe that, what is when, uh, what's Thursday? Is that April 1st? I think it is, isn't it? So I forgot to put that up on the screen, but that is our next monthly tribunal meeting. So uh, 10 o'clock here in the sanctuary, so please be aware of that. Uh, we will start here at 10, uh, the Prince of Peace House of Prayer, the Trinity Tribunal with the TXAPN, and hope that all of you can be here for that. So please be aware of that. Uh, we do have Seder tonight. We have everyone that has signed up that wants to be there. 
I'm going to be really bold here. I shouldn't do this, but we probably have a couple spaces. If somebody said, well, I just didn't see it, which oftentimes happens, but just ask me. No, it would never happen here, would it? <clears throat> never. I've written stuff, and I forget about it. <laughs> so anyway, just please come to me, though, first. Don't just show up. Uh, come to me and see if we do have a space or two. I think we do, but just I want to make sure that we check that out. So, but it starts at uh, 5 o'clock tonight. I want the host to be here by 4 so that you can help get your tables all set up. And if you are attending it tonight, don't show up at 5. Show up maybe quarter till, 10 till at the latest, because I know some of you are bringing food that needs to be on the table. So uh, we don't want you showing up at 5 or 5.10. The service has started, and we're having to wait for you to put your food on the table that you were supposed to bring it. Quarter till 5. Does that make sense to everybody? All right, good. Let's go on to the next one there, Tim. Wow, it is. Next Sunday is Resurrection Day. Amen. So we'll come and celebrate. Bring your friends, bring your family. It's time to gather. It's time to rejoice in the Lord. He's alive, y'all. So that's next Sunday. Next one there, Tim. Okay, this is happening. There's a lot of things happening over the next uh, few weeks here. Uh, this is one of them. Uh, there were prophetic words that have been given to the state of Texas about uh, a border, a trip around the border that needed to happen again. Uh, if you've been with me very long, you'll know that Kay and I did that back in 2007. We did the 3,276 3, miles around the border uh, in obedience to a word that the Lord had given us. That was prior to TXAPN. And uh, the Lord, through a prof several prophetic words, has said, you must go up again. And then there was a vision that was given uh, to one of our leaders in Houston that they saw us like a golden crochet hook being pulled by golden yarn, and it was weaving itself around the border. So we literally are calling this the golden thread journey. Uh, you will see more details coming on it. it. This does not start until the 21st on San Jacinto Day, uh, Clay. Uh, uh, Nash will be with us, Dutch Sheets will be with us, Jackie Tyre from Georgia is going to be with us. Uh, we'll be at uh, the Washington, I mean, not the Washington, the San Jacinto Monument uh, that afternoon, and then in my hometown of Dickinson that night for worship before we um, head out towards Galveston the next morning and sometime 17 days later come back home. So now, there are some rest times in there, and I'm literally only missing one Sunday, believe it or not. So I tried to plan that in. So that's happening. I'll try to get more details to you because some people have said, well, can we join you or can we meet you someplace? Yes. I've got all the dates and times and locations along the border. And so if you want to make a trip up to Gainesville or up to Wichita Falls, and as we're coming through to pray with us, you're welcome to do that. Amen? And we can tell you some really good places to eat. That's going to be the sermon today. Uh, before I forget, uh, there's another one that's on there, is there's going to be a meeting April 15th through 17th. It's a Thursday through a Saturday, uh, which is called Wielding the Axe. It is a meeting in Shreveport. And so uh, Dutch and Tim Karskadden and Clay Nash and I will be the speakers at that one. And uh, that will be, like I said, at the church there in Shreveport that Tim uh, oversees. So I'll get you some more details on that. That was just one of the, the announcement pictures were so many this morning. I just said I can't put any more because it, you won't see them all. So, and I think that that's pro oh, no, here's another one. <laughs> Kelly, can I come up here and tell them that they should come to this class? Get it, come here. Get up here. You should come to the class. <laughs> no. Honestly, really, it's probably one of the most enlightening classes that our house offers. It's not a membership thing. It's a vision thing. And when you catch the vision of the house, you say, I want to be a part or I don't want to be a part. We don't get you to sign a contract and cut your fingers and dip it in blood and none of that crazy nonsense, okay? What we're wanting you to do is... <laughs> well, that's probably still going to happen. No. <laughs> it's, a, it's a great class. Every time he offers it, I go through it, and people say, well, I already went through that class. Fantastic. Let me, let me encourage you to do it again. 
do it again. Do it again. There's things that you're going to hear that are going to refresh your memory, that are going to rekindle the flames that need to be stoked. You know what I'm saying? So come to the class. Love you. Amen. And we'll get you some more details because it not, doesn't start till May 12th, but I wanted you to be already praying into it. It is what Kelly just said, and, and uh, it's always been an exciting class because every class is different because the makeup of the people coming is different as you hear the vision, as you share testimonies and all of that. I think Christine has been to at least 25 of them. Close to it, right, Christine? And Kelly's not far behind, but we, we encourage everyone to come. It'll be a Wednesday night. We're starting a little bit earlier at 6 o'clock because we're going to say if you'd like to, you can bring your, a sack lunch. You can bring a salad if you want during the class. That way, by 7 o'clock or 7.30 at the latest, you'll be heading home. And uh, so we, we're trying to get you out of in here and out of here before it gets dark for those of you that uh, don't want to drive in the dark and all of that. So that will start in May 12th and go for 12 weeks, okay? So please be aware of that. All right, please join us. We had a good group again this morning, 930. We're having this intentionally focused prayer, intentional focused prayer on, on the services. And just obviously it just really ignited something this morning in our worship and everything this morning. So thank you for coming on that. And I think all the rest of the announcements there. Do I have one more? Well, that's coming in the sermon. Do you want to just wait? Well, I, really? <laughs> you got sermon time with that one. Okay, is that okay, Pat? <laughs> so y'all pay attention to what she just said that's going to come out in the soyman, okay? In the soyman. All right. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> no, I didn't forget it. It was it was like that would have been another slide. <laughs> so <laughs> all right. <laughs> Amen. Oh, thank you, Lord. May the words of my mouth, all of them, Lord, and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. Oh Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. 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 Wow. It's a good season, y'all. It's a good season. I was able to listen to a little bit. We had some things planned this weekend, uh, so I was able to listen a little bit of Dutch's message last night. I would encourage you when those all the recordings come, if you didn't listen to it live uh, starting on um, Friday night, um, please go back and listen to them. All the, all the words were powerful. We are in the Passover season. Uh, it's, it's just always a good time of the year always a good time of the year. You know, it amazes me, um, not so much anymore as it did maybe uh, several years ago, of how much of the church out there, not our church, but so much of the gathered church out there was clueless about Passover. They had a lot of focus on Holy Week, uh, which was all good, you know, on Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, uh, Resurrection Day. Um, but the whole idea that the Lord has already had, uh, had already established certain seasons that he said these are to be held in perpetuity forever and ever, forevermore. I'm not going to get some words out this morning. That's obvious. They're just going to be too tough to say. But uh, he said these are to be celebrated uh, as long as you are alive. These are my festivals. And that's uh, Passover and Pentecost and then the Feast of Tabernacles. And... Um, I think last year was uh, especially powerful, and this year again, because the Lord has been releasing this fresh word that says, in this season, these festivals are real. If you'll remember last year, at this time, we were in our second week of lockdown. We weren't meeting in the church, uh, but we still had a Seder plan where we all gathered together. And the Lord said, well, just live stream it out of your home and let them meet in their homes. And you're talking about a real Passover experience when you can do it in your own homes. And I, I just want to warn you, uh, I feel like the Lord is leading us there more and more. doesn't mean we may not have something here, but I just feel him pushing us into every household 
having a time when they celebrate this meal together as a family. And if you're a single or whatever else and you don't have anybody that can do it with it, we just make sure that we're, you're in a home where it's happening because that's what it truly is about. It's not just about a big old banquet uh, to celebrate something. It really is something that's meant to be in the home, in the very center of who we are with Christ. And that's not even a part of my sermon, so that's an extra little piece that you got this morning. Interesting week this week. Um, I had been contacted by a young man. His name is Brian. Uh, he's a master's student at uh, Baylor. And his master's is in church history and especially in the oral history of church. Uh, church history is uh, powerful as you read the stories of it. But what's really powerful is when you have somebody that literally gives an oral history of something an oral history of how something unfolded in their lives, uh, it adds something to that. So he had contacted me, and he said, I, I, I researched you, which is kind of a scary thought. And uh, he says, I discovered that you are the coordinator, the leader of the Texas Apostolic Prayer Network. You know, I saw on just Google the many things that you're involved with, with the apostolic prophetic movement, and I really would like, to do an oral history on that. Uh, he said that he had heard the interview done with Peter Wagner several years ago, and he said, I was really astonished at the bias against him regarding something that seemed to be unfolding as a movement in the church. He says, I really would like to hear your story. And then if you have some other friends who move in this, that I would be able to interview them as well. And so I prayed about it, and I said, yeah, I'll be glad to do that. You know, so um, we got on a Zoom call, spent two and a half hours on Zoom with him on um, whatever day that was, uh, Thursday morning. And he, I simply walked through my life. He didn't want me just to give a definition of the movement. He wanted to know, how did you grow up? What were the influences in your life? Uh, what kind of influence did your parents have or where you grew up or the background of your church and or the churches that you served? He wanted to know all those things. And talking about something that was just stirring me up. Now, some people may say, well, you, do you trust this? And I said, well, I had every feeling in my spirit that this was very good. Uh, number one, because uh, it's an audio video recording of what I shared but in about a week and a half here, they're going to send me a full transcript of it so I can read through it, make sure that it is everything that I said, it's all correct, and then it will get archived there in the Baylor Oral History Archives, okay? And it's, and it's going to happen with, uh, I gave them the names of about five or six other leaders um, included that he, can, that he can interview, okay? As I was going through this, though, it, it really, again, stirred up my journey and started realizing what God had done. And what was dangerous was he kept on saying, well, can you share some of the building blocks uh, of your life that led you to wear it? So uh, uh, something out of my life, a story would come up, and I would start sharing it. Well, in sharing that story, another story came up. In sharing that story, another story came up. No wonder it took us two and a half hours. But he wanted to hear it all. He wanted to see how the Lord was developing something in someone. You know, you don't just wake up one day and say, oh, we're now part of the apostolic prophetic movement. That was, a, a, you know, when he interviewed me at the beginning and had me write down some dates, the first time I ever really heard that spoken directly regarding me was in 1999. We're talking 22 years ago. This is not something that just, whew, now it's here. It is something that the Lord unfolds. And so as I was doing that, it was an amazing journey. And the Lord kept on releasing to me. And I, I really have a short message this morning because I, I want you just to catch something this morning. Um, kind of the highlight or the center point of everything that we started talking about kind of focused on Ephesians chapter 4. Because that's where it says, and I'm going to read that here in just a second, about the gifts that the Lord has given to the church. Okay, the apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher. 
So we're going to get there in just a second. But I realize that that is the main focus of what the Lord was trying to develop in me. Now, you've heard me say, tell these stories many, many times. And that's the, that's the famous pew right over there or here on the floor in front of the altar. Because many times I just didn't know or have any clue about what this was all about. I grew up Lutheran. And even though I was spirit-filled, there still wasn't a lot of this language that you saw in Lutheran circles. What do you mean, the fivefold gifts? What do you mean about the five offices of the church? Uh, as far as I know, we only got two, the pastor's office and the secretary's office. And I'm serious. I, I didn't understand what they were talking about. It just wasn't a part of the dialogue. It wasn't, it wasn't there. It, it, it wasn't that I was dumb. Well, in some cases, I think that probably was the case. But it just, it just wasn't a part of my upbringing. And I couldn't go to other Lutheran pastors and ask about it because they hadn't taught it. It just wasn't there. So over the process of all of these years, the Lord started revealing things to me that gave me a fresh understanding of what this is all about. Number one, encouragement to you. Um, it is something that I put on the oral history, and I made it very clear that one of the things that my dad taught me from very young he said, Tom, remain teachable. Remain teachable. As you're learning things, grab a hold of it, listen to it, evaluate it, ask godly counsel on it. If you find out by testimony of the Spirit or by good godly counsel that it's not very good, then just let it fall to the ground and move on. But at least remain teachable. I don't know if I've ever shared that uh, story with you. It was one of those stories that I shared is my dad was pastoring in uh, Dickinson, Texas at Faith Lutheran Church. He had a couple women that I don't remember the time period. It might have been over a couple weeks or several weeks. But two women um, that had grown up Lutheran, and one of them was actually just washing dishes at the kitchen sink, looking out the window. And all of a sudden, literally, all of a sudden, started praying in the Spirit. She had been given a language. She was clueless. She was scared. Not quite sure what this was about. Well, she knew my dad because she was a, a member there. So she and another person who had almost an identical experience, they both went to my dad and said, this is what's happened to us. And dad just said, well, you know, I think I know what that might be. But why don't the two of you, and if you know of anybody else of a similar experience, let's just do a study of the Holy Spirit. So he started doing a Bible study of the Holy Spirit. Bam. Then he got it. Mom got it. And eventually down the road, I got it. Okay? Okay. Even though we were Lutheran, we got it. Because whether you believe it or not, it was the mainline denominations that were getting it back then. Okay. So that kind of thing was happening. And, but even though we received that, and even though that it was now a part of our lives, we still didn't have all that language. We didn't have all those things that the Lord was trying to release into us as far as maturing us in the walk with Jesus, the walk with the Spirit. And so it was very important uh, along the line that I just seek out information on this. But a lot of times when I sought out information with it, I would just get a simple kind of a pat answer. Oh, well, that's the five gifts that are mentioned in Ephesians. Can you give me a little bit more? Well, it's the apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher. Can you give me a little bit more? Because obviously, this is extremely important to you. And I want to know what the Lord has been showing you in the development of these gifts that have been given by Jesus into the church. Okay? 
I want to know about these things. Now, here was the point of all of that, is that many times I would just eventually have to close myself in the office or come here in the sanctuary by myself, bringing my Bible and saying, Lord, I don't know what this means. And his answer was always the same answer, read it. So I would read it. I would turn and I would start reading it. And I say, yes, Lord, I've read this before, but I don't understand. He says, then read it again. Then read it again, again, again. Meditate on it. Ask my spirit to give you revelation of what this means. How this is that which is, needs to be released into the ecclesia in this hour. And so that was the walk that I had with a lot of different things over all these years. Yes, there were books out there, and I read those books, but a lot of times, they, just to be very honest, a lot of them came with obvious bias based on their experiences of the church. And they were even saying that some of these truths are not meant for the entire truth, the entire church, because some of the church doesn't talk about the full counsel of God or the full gospel of God. And I'm thinking, I think I believe in the full gospel of God. Here's another phrase I don't quite understand. Okay. All I'm saying is there's sometimes things we just don't get. And you can come to me and we can talk about it. You can come to Lifting Up Eagles and we'll probably talk about it. But the main thing is get on your face before the Lord with your Bible and just say, Holy Spirit, teach me. Teach me. And he did. Let me just read this. We're in Ephesians 4. I'm not going to do the whole chapter, just starting with verse 8, and we're going to go down through 16. Therefore, he says, the Lord says, when he, the Lord, ascended on high, he, the Lord, led captivity captive and gave gifts to men. I really, I wish I had had my uh, uh, passion translation. If one of you have that, uh, bring it up to me, if you will, because that opening line really, um, thank you. Because I like the way that he uh, says this. This is why he says, he ascends into the heavenly heights, taking his many captured ones with him, and gifts were then given to men. Thank you, Phyllis. Just listen carefully because uh, I don't want to get into that aspect of teaching this morning, but let me just ask a question that I think you know the answer to. Where are we seated? In the heavenly places, in the heavenly realms with Christ. This is a reference to that. He is leading captive those that have been captured by him, and he's taking them into heavenly places. But in the process of taking them into heavenly places, he is releasing gifts to us as we dwell in earthly realms. Okay? Can you, can you kind of get the picture? He says, okay, I, you now have said, I want to follow you, Jesus. So he says, good. When I head home after Resurrection Day... I'm going to hold you captive in the heavenly realms with me. You're now new citizens of heaven, but you live here. So even though you're citizens of heaven, I need to give you gifts which will cause you to be active as my agents on the earth. Okay? I need to give you things that will help you carry out the work of the church and the work of the kingdom. So he then gives gifts. Okay? Verse 11. Oh, let's go to verse 10. I missed that one. He who descended, in other words, he came down to earth, is also the one who ascended far above all the heavens that he might fill all things. So in other words, he had come to earth. The word became flesh and dwelt in our midst. He ascended back into heaven. And in by doing so, he is filling the earth now <clears throat> with all things that are representative of the kingdom and will of God. That's being released into us. Especially these gifts. Verse 11. And he himself, 
He himself, not man, not even the Holy Spirit, not even Daddy Abba Father, he himself, Jesus, gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers. Now, I want to deal with a couple of words there in the Greek. I'm not going to give you the Greek words because some of them are just, I'm not going to be able to pronounce them this morning. Let me just be honest. It's not working today, that part. The Spirit is on me, and I just, it's not working. He gave. He himself gave. The Greek word there does translate gave, but it also means granted or showed or put or delivered. In other words, he put something on us. He delivered something to us. He showed us something. He gave something, okay? It's, it's more powerful than just, well, I'm just going to give some gifts. It, it's literally a placement upon us. It is an anointing. It is a mantling. It is an empowering. It is a delivering. It is a putting on us. It is a putting on us. It would literally be uh, fulfilled in, in our days where you, uh, where if someone was being ordained, let's say that a high priest was going to ordain another to be priest, they would literally put something on them. They would either put oil on them or they would put blood on their thumbs and their toes or they would put a mantle on them or they would put the garments of the priest on them. That, that imagery there of putting something on us is delivering us, and the deliverance there is not talking about delivering us from evil, but in one sense it is. It's delivering us into the fullness of the will of the Father that was accomplished by His Son ascending back to the heavenly realms. It's a part of the fullness. Wow, is right. Okay, so this is not something just to kind of, oh, well, that's kind of a neat idea. Because we need these guys. We need these women. We need apostles, prophets, pastors, evangelists, teachers. We need these. And he himself gave. Now, the next word I want to look at is interesting. Some to be apostles, some to be prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers. Now, typically what's happened there, and that's what I was having a little hard time understanding based on what the Lord was revealing to me. Because that gives you the indication that some of you are going to receive this. Does anyone feel left out? Do you think that that's really the intention of the Father? I don't, see, I don't think so. The word some there, we've got to look at that word because, well, that would mean eeny, meeny, miny, mo. God has chosen you to be a teacher. And I'm going to put you a mantle on you to be a teacher. The rest of you are just going to have to listen to him. That has been basically the mindset of the church. A pastor, how do you become a pastor? Well, you're called by God. You then go to a seminary or a Bible school or whatever else. You get your credentials at the end of it, and now you're the one who everyone needs to listen to. Or they're the ones that are completely in charge of the church. Would you show that to me in the scriptures? It's not there. You will not find that phrase. You will not find that idea. The ones that actually were in charge of helping to minister the church were called elders, not pastors. The, the pastor is a gift. I'm getting ahead of myself. So some, I saw it again when I, I typed it out here, and I'm thinking, Lord, now you're going to have to show me this again because I... And he showed me something brand new. I never had looked up the Greek word for some, S-O-M-E. Come on, Dutch would be ashamed of me. You've got to look up the words, okay? What's interesting is it doesn't even get translated that way. That's not what the Greek word means. It can be used, but it's not the real meaning. The word some there in the Greek actually means verily, truly, or indeed. That doesn't have anything to say about eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Let me just put a different twist on this, on this verse. 
And he himself verily, truly, indeed, granted, showed up, put on, delivered gifts unto his church, which include apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. Not some. He gave those gifts to the church. Those are gifts of the church. Now, to give you a little bit fuller understanding of that, fuller really meaning being filled up completely, is for just a moment realize that these five gifts are all represented perfectly and fully in Jesus Christ himself. Apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher. He gave himself to us in all of his fullness. Man. Somehow that just shifts things. Because we're not talking about somebody after church now saying, well, I think that mantle fell on me, so I've got to go to Walmart and get me some business cards that say apostle or evangelist or something because that's now I'm one of the some I'm, I'm being facetious, but I'm not, because that, that's happened. That's happened. People have called themselves by these gifts, even though they've never even exercised them, okay? Now, what's really going to throw you for a loop is as I was talking to Brian and doing this oral interview, the Lord reminded me of a revelation that he gave to me many years ago. I remember we were, I was up in northern Idaho out at um, Farragut State Park up by Coeur d'Alene. I was with a friend of mine who was helping oversee intercessory work there in Idaho. We had been up in the Coeur d'Alene area and just felt like, you know, I'm not even sure where the 1969 Boy Scout National Jamboree took place, but it was in this area. And he says, well, I think I know that it was at Farragut State Park. And I said, well, do you want to go there? And I said, well, yeah, let's, I guess, go there. So we went to Farragut State Park. Looks completely different from 2015, from 1969. But as we came in, there was this meeting area that had these large poles that represented the gathering together of the scouts of of America, and they were still there. So I went out and I just kind of went out and looked at some of the historical markers regarding the Jamboree and just had all these memories because I had just become an Eagle Scout. Just, all these memories were flooding back in me. And then I said, you know, Lord, this is really unique, but why am I here? This, this, was, this was a spontaneous thing. This was a serendipity. Wow, did you notice I really got a long word out there? Um, It it just happened. It it wasn't something that I had planned. Why am I here? At that time, I had become an Eagle Scout. I had come up through the ranks also of leadership from patrol leader to senior patrol leader to assistant senior scout master to assistant scout master. And now I'm standing there in 1969 at the place of the Jamboree. We were there during July 20th. We had been on that very lawn watching a big screen showing Neil Armstrong stepping onto the moon. I mean, it was just, it was an amazing season. And I'm saying, Lord, what am I doing here? He says, you need to understand at that moment you were an apostle. Huh? No. No, you, you gave me that gifting, you know, now, just, I mean, maybe 10 years ago. What, what are you saying to me? He says, well, you do really believe in Psalm 139, right? And I said, well, of course I do. It's one of my favorite psalms. He has all the days of your life before any one of them happened written in your scroll. Well, what do you think is written there? Just blank pages? What, what has he written down? What, what is your destiny that he is going to help release into your life? And part of that destiny is literally your spiritual DNA. I had already appointed you to be this before you were it in your mindset. 
Does that match up with Scripture? Before I was born, Jeremiah said, you called me to be a prophet. Well, sure it fits. Before we were born, he had already destined us to receive the fivefold giftings of the fullness of who he is into the church. Now, please don't go here and go, go have your Mexican food if you want to. Now, don't go and get a business card and put your title on it. That's not what this is about. It really isn't. It is about having the full gifting of Christ in us corporately and in us, in us individually. There should be a manifestation in each one of our lives, being in Christ Jesus, of the full fivefold giftings that he gives to the church. There should be an apostolic anointing in you. There should be a prophetic anointing in you. There should be evangelistic anointing in each of you. There should be teaching and pastoring giftings in each one of you. Now, some of you may move strongly in some of those because you've been trained up or you've been encouraged or exhorted by friends or family and say, man, you really do have a gift for teaching. Or you really have a gift for evangelist. Well, yeah, because God planted it in there. Now, it may need to come alive in a more real form. But again, don't go out and get a business card. Matter of fact, I, I told Brian on the call, um, and I know that there are many out there that disagree with me, and that's okay, because I disagree with them. Um, I don't want to be a called Apostle Tom. I really, even I'm beginning to even feel uncomfortable about being called Pastor Tom, because Paul himself didn't do that. He said, Paul, an apostle. In other words, Paul, one gifted to be apostolic. Tom called to be apostolic. Tom called to release a pastoring gift. Okay? When we start going around and just giving the titles, we have a tendency of limiting what God has truly released into each one of you. And I... I I don't know about you, but I don't want that to happen. That, that would fa that I would be a failure as a leader of the house if I saw that happening, okay? Now, the revelation that the Lord continued to give on me this is where he started taking me into the next verses because I was really, uh, I never questioned my call as a pastor, but I never quite understood how the Lord saw it in the implementation of that gifting into the church. And he would always use these kind of phrases. Um, you've heard me say this one before. I didn't call you to grow a church. I called you here to manifest the kingdom of God. Well, see, that takes a burden off of... of uh, he didn't call me here to try to find some methods for getting more people in the pews. He said, the people in the pews need to manifest the kingdom of God. Now, that took me a long time to, to kind of come to that revelation. I mean, but that's what the Lord showed me. He says, Tom, you, I've given you a gifting of pastor, but I never gave you that gift so that you would be the pastor. And I said, well, what do you mean? He says, you're not supposed to be the pastor of the house. It's a gift that I have granted to you so that you would release the pastoring gift into everyone in the pews and help them to understand that every one of you has a part of, of that five-fold fullness of Christ, part of which is being pastoring. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Because then, now, verse 12 makes sense. He gave these gifts for the equipping of the saints for the work of ministry. The work of the ministry is carried out through the five-fold release of the apostolic, prophetic, evangelistic, teaching and pastoring gifts being released into the body. He's really messing with us. And you'll notice how much he's messing with us over this last year when he told us very clearly through this pandemic, 
Don't expect the church to look like what you thought it was normally prior to this because I am trying to bring you back, reform you back to where I intended this to be at the beginning. You know, it's, what's so wonderful to see, and that's, you remember at the beginning of the year, which is hard to believe we're four months in now, um, well, just over three months in. Uh, remember the beginning of the year, I think it was the first Sunday, I said, you know, a lot of people are saying, I'm so glad 2020 is over. And I came to you with a different mindset. I said, it was my best year. Because just felt this whole new revelation coming whole who no a whole new anointing and understanding of what the church is meant to be and the kingdom is all about it expressed as we saw it expressed uh, last Passover when we had to meet in our homes and in your homes there was the full expression of apostolic prophetic evangelist pastor and teacher now, it may not be because, well, I didn't go to Bible school, but I'll guarantee you, probably some of you prayed over your family members. Some of you maybe even said, well, this is going to be a good opportunity sitting around Seder for me to introduce them again to the, who Jesus is. Evangelist. And obviously, if you're walking your way through the Seder meal, you are teaching the principles of the kingdom of God. And there might have even been some phrases or words that said, hey, you know, as we're doing this, I really feel like I need to share this with you. Oh, wow, wait a minute, that's prophetic. And apostolic, just the idea of providing leadership for that. Do you see what I'm seeing? We can't limit this anymore. We can't just put titles on people and say, well, that's their job. It's, it's the ecclesia. It's the church. Now, yes, there will still be, and there always was a lead person. There will always be a person that, you know, gets out front. I, I, I take that role seriously. But part of the seriousness of it is when the Lord started showing me about the pastoring gift, I started just through testimony and through teachings and sermons and other opportunities to give you all opportunity to pastor each other. Have you ever noticed those? Like, why don't you all during worship just turn to each other and minister to each other as we're worshiping? In other words, let's exercise the pastoring gift here. Or if some of you have a word or something that needs to be given, let's exercise that prophetic ministry in our midst. See, that's the bringing forth of the giftings into the church, and that's what our job is. What shocked me was when it actually happened. I, I was recalling an experience today, and um, blessings to, to Margaret, who is uh, home with her, her kids today, had a special day with them today, and, and Pat Wisner, who is home up there. I remember Kay, I don't know how many years that was ago, she had some minor surgery that needed to be done, and it was going to be done in the morning. So being a good husband, and not a pastor, but just a good husband, I was going to be there as early as I could to make sure that I was with her and prayed with her. And I walk into the hospital up there in the HEB area, and there's Margaret and Pat already ministering to her. I'm thinking, I'm not even going to ask, what are you all doing here? I said, hey, it works. <laughs> This works. <laughs> what it does is I'm working myself out of a job. No, I'm working myself out of a, of a, of a title that the that people put on us that says, well, that's your job. I'm still going to pastor people because it, it, the gifting's in there, okay? But the gifting is in you too. And I've watched many of you after services. Matter of fact, poor Lisa over here, I'm thinking... There she is ministering again, and Vashti's on the floor being ministered by the Holy Spirit. And I'm saying, Lisa, you got to lock up the church. You are the official pastor today.
because y'all are ministry to each other. And I've just, have at it. Have at it. That's what this is all about, folks. This is what this is all about. He wants us all equipped with the full nature of Christ. You know, I remember one of the beautiful illustrations of that, uh, just to kind of give you an image here of something. And I can't remember who taught this to me years and years ago, but they actually did it. I wish I had thought about this before I came over. But he took a, just a glove, a right-handed glove, just limp old glove, you know, used in the garden or whatever else. And he says, here you are. And then he put his hand into the glove and said, you are now filled with the fullness of the fivefold ministry of Christ, activated by the spirit of the living God. So now, whatever you do, you're doing it for the kingdom. Wow. For the equipping of the saints for the work of ministry, for the edifying, the building up of the body of Christ, that we all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Unity. Uh, again, that's a, it's an interesting word there, and it, and it translates unity, but it also has a reference to oneness or unanimity. Okay, in other words, it's not just we're all doing the same thing. It means that we're one, inseparable. Not only us with Christ and Christ with us, but as Jesus himself said, Father, as you and I are one, so these are now one with me and I am one with them. He didn't just say, well, have you noticed, Dad, we're, we're all in the same room right now? Because that sometimes is the fullness of the understanding of unity. We're all doing the same thing. Oneness is an inseparable, relational, covenant thing that goes on that is beyond our understanding. It's a mystery, but it's oneness in him, inseparable, inseparable. And all of this for the, is for the purpose that we should no longer be children tossed to and fro by carried about by every wind of doctrine or by the trickery of man or craftiness of deceitful plotting. Okay? It's, it's all for the purpose of protecting us but also being the instrument of what God intends us to be. So the Lord would say to us, you have stepped this morning into the fullness of my river. And I am now with you in the river, moving together. Allow the full flow of my spirit, represented by my full nature and gifting, to be released in you and through you. For I have equipped you, anointed you, called you, put upon you, this identity, this mantle. So move with it. For there are times when the Lord says, you may not use the word, but you will be apostolic because you will be providing leadership and strength and guidance, much like an admiral does to his fleet. And you may not use the word or call yourself that, but I will flow on you spontaneously and you will begin to shepherd someone as they walk through a struggle in their life. Because this is your first calling, says the Lord. I called you to do this before I called you even a parent or a spouse or a brother or a sister or a friend. This is the calling on your life, says the Lord. This is what you were designed for. Some of you will see it activated because you are a parent, 
but it's truly because I have put a shepherding or teaching or even a prophetic mantle on you to speak, teach, or shepherd your child. So receive my gifts today. You have passed over into a new season. You are my resurrected body. And I will use you and the fullness of my nature in you, says the Lord. Amen. Amen. So the Lord is really breaking something in all of us, I believe. I believe this word, you can see how restrictive that word some some apostles, some prophets, you know, and many of us have been left out or felt left out. So now, now that you're going to enter in, there's a breaking. So I just feel a a really prophetic unction over this because you've been in a mold. It's like a plaster mold. And you've been like, I can only be nice. I'm supposed to be a, a nice Christian so there's, there's this breaking of that plaster mold and so that you're going to break out of it. There's, there's times where you're going to have to be mean to people. Uh, I don't know if you've ever ministered to a satanic uh, person, but you, you have to kind of like know what you're doing. You know, in, in Belgium, we had to actually argue. It's not, not to be mean or, or to be argumentative, but if you didn't know what you were talking about, then they didn't want to listen to you. You had to like put put some meat on the table, and really stand up for what you believe. You had to have some convictions. You know, if you were just a pushover and like, oh, you don't want to, you don't want to argue. You don't, you don't want to talk about that. It's not important to you. You mean the gospel is not important to you? See, you have to like break some molds in order to reach another level of people. There's some other people that we're going to be ministering to. And now that you can see Jesus in you in the fivefold, I mean, we're talking about did Jesus back away from the Pharisees? Did Jesus back away from, I mean, from all of those, uh, you know, traps? You, you know, you, you saw them putting traps around Jesus. Jesus did not back away from those traps. He stepped through the the. The, the problems. He m- marched forward in, in through the problems. So there's some breaking. I just want you to bow your head. I want you to receive this breaking. I feel the Holy Spirit Amen. is like breaking this off of us. So Lord, in the name of Jesus, Holy Spirit, we just send the Holy Spirit to each one of you. Just send the Holy Spirit right now in the name of Jesus. The transformation, the renewing of our minds, the transformation into the fivefold in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. We say yes, Lord. We say yes, Lord, to apostles. Yes, Lord, to prophets. Yes, Lord, to being teachers, pastors, evangelists. We say yes, Lord, because the Holy Spirit wants to come upon you and to make you pastors, teachers, evangelists, apostles, and prophets, whatever moment that the Lord brings you into, that you will be an obedient servant to the Lord, to be the obedient voice of the Lord in the earth at that moment in the name of Jesus. Father, we just tear down the lies right now in the name of Jesus. We tear down the restrictions, Lord God. And, Father, we tear down this word, some, out of our hearts, Lord, in the name of Jesus. We ask you for healing to come now into our hearts. And, Father, we'll break into the new season. We'll break into the new living like Jesus. The new capacity, new capacity in the name of Jesus. Now move into the new capacity, Lord. Move us into, Lord. Father, the strengthening of our voice. The strengthening of our convictions, the strengthening of our words in the name of Jesus, that we believe the word of God. And the word of God now is going to come out of our mouth. And and it's going to come out as a roaring lion sometimes. It's not just going to be the lion, the, the lamb. It's going to be the lion as well. Father, in the name of Jesus, the word of God, that we're now trusting fully in the word of God, that we can actually speak the word of God. To an official, 
to an official. Father, we declare in the name of Jesus that this house will move into the capacity of speaking to officials, governors, rulers, people in high places. Father, we believe Ephesians 6, Lord, that we have the full armor of God and that we believe that we stand strong in the armor of God. But now in, in our spirit, Lord, to move into a place where we're speaking to officials, speaking to rulers and governors, that we're going to break into the word of God to another level of speaking the word of God and decreeing and declaring and and facing the enemy, but, but, but using your words, Lord, to tear down the enemy's strongholds in the other people's minds. That's it. That, that's it right there. It's about tearing down strongholds in other people's minds. Thank you, Jesus. Now, you're going to have to dig into this. You're going to have to put yourself into this. You're going to have to step forward into the things of God. Now, the Lord wants you to step into those things of God and begin to declare the words of God. Jesus said, I wish that you would be one with the Father just like I am one with the Father. Do you not realize that the Father wants to speak? He wants to say something on this earth. And he's going to say it through you. Now, I want you to be, I want you to have that, that sense of uh, righteous indignation. A righteous anger in your heart because your anger at the devil, your anger at the, the darkness that has taken over people's minds, that ang anger that, that causes you to motivate you to say, no, I do not want you to walk off that cliff. No, I do not want you to commit suicide. No, I do not want you to, to, to throw your life away. I do not want you to live without Jesus. And I've, I just declare in the name of Jesus, I'm going to impart this. In Jesus' name, you will have a new passion and a new levels of motivation. And you will, you will desire things of God. And you will desire and you will see the things of God in people. And you will go after it in the name of Jesus. You will go after it. If, if you saw a truck coming at someone... It, you may have to tackle the person in order to get them out of the path of that truck. But wouldn't you do it? Why would you not tackle somebody if you saw the truck coming and they did not see the truck coming? Wouldn't you tackle somebody to get them away from the path of that truck? Why would you not do that? Do you see what I'm saying? I'm saying in now in the name of Jesus... Holy Spirit, put this upon us. Put the burden of the Lord and the mantle of the Lord upon us in the name of Jesus. That we agree with heaven for every person's life that you put in front of us. Father, those divine encounters, those divine moments where we're, we're, we're going to pay attention to these moments, Lord. And Father, if it means that we attack and tackle somebody to the ground to say, No, you need Jesus. No, you cannot live that life. No, you cannot continue to destroy what God has designed you for. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, we break off the old styles. We break off the old patterns. We break off the old mindsets. We break off that mindset that just causes us to be just so nice but ineffective. And we break off the ineffectiveness, Lord God. Father, we break off, Lord, the shyness and the timidity in the name of Jesus. We break off, Lord God, the, the, the restrictions of the enemy in the Christian restrictions. Father, the words, Father, the, the mindsets of, 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 of past, Lord God. Father, the things that we have we've built our, our little perspective of Christianity in such a way that we, we have hindered all that you wanted to do in this earth. And Lord, we release a mantle of authority. I, I, I'm asking you to, to taste and see the mantle of authority. Taste and see. Walk in. Taste what the food of authority means in your mouth. Taste what authority means upon your life. And upon the life of your family. Upon the life of your city. Upon the life of your grocery store. Upon the life of your apartment building. Upon the life of your school. Upon the life of, of your business and your industry of business. In the name of Jesus, we declare that you will taste the authority in the earth. That God has an authority in the earth. And guess who it is? Yes, 
It's you and me being the authority in the earth and going and destroying darkness in people's lives. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Did y'all just see what happened? The gifting gets stirred. It gets stirred, y'all. So receive it. Receive it. He's stirring you. He is stirring you. Lord, let each one of us be led where you have us to go. And let us be used as that authoritative, powerful voice of the kingdom and of the king in those places. In Jesus' name. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Wow. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Blessings, y'all. Blessings. Wow.